Greetings, brethren and non-brethren. This is Emmanuel Fernandez with Biblical Science, and today the Lord put it on my heart. Again, with that, why does he keep saying that? Lord put it on my heart. Like I said, it's uh, you do most of the time, anyway, should be doing what the Lord wants you to do. How do I know if it's the Lord? Like I said, your your Bible is an instruction manual. Remember I told you, Bible stands for, and I don't even know if it really stands for, if it's an acronym, but it's funny how it, it, can, it can stand for Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. B-I-B-L-E. So instruction manual. That's how I know God will put it in my heart to talk about this topic. And remember I told you, just because you're saved, your total depravity, your sinful nature does not leave you. Oh, here's a, here's a, the, the point of you being saved in an unsaved person. It's very, it's, it's very simple. It can be very simple. It sometimes can be complicated. But here's the simple part. The saved person sees how he's totally depraved. He's aware of it. The unsaved person doesn't. I'll prove it to you right now. This is my 27th video, and I can't believe I'm talking about this topic now. I made about 25, 26 videos so far. And now I realize, uh, hey, I've got one of the most important topics of all. And I talked about a lot of important topics. They didn't talk about this topic, which is prayer. <laughs> See how depraved I am? Took this long? God's probably uh, saying, hey, we should be talking about prayer a long time ago. But it's okay because I didn't upload any of them yet. I, I could probably, uh, God, God will tell me I didn't upload it because I want God to tell me which one to upload in which order. But prayer. How's your prayer life? First of all, uh, for unbelievers, God does not answer prayers I don't believe except one. And that's the prayer of a sinner. Now, he, he's believing in easy beliefs. He pray, he's saying pray and you get saved. Absolutely not. Okay? Absolutely not. You have to believe fervently and effectually in that sinner's prayer to get saved. Some people, that's another thing. Some people think you have to say a prayer to get saved. I didn't say a prayer and I got saved. Okay? It's like, uh, you're in an argument with, with your parents. Real heated argument. Uh, they, and it's a couple days, you don't end up speaking with them, which I'm talking about me, by the way. And they come in and they talk to you like nothing has ever happened. And you do the same. You know what you said, even though you didn't say it? You know, you know, body language. We speak by body language more than talking. You just said to her, I forgive you, and she's saying, forgive me. Even though I didn't say that, and she didn't say that. So don't, don't, it, it go, it's double standard. Don't think a sinner's prayer saves you. Don't think you even have to say a prayer to get saved. It's being convicted, pricking of your heart, that you're a sinner. God convicted me I was a sinner. The last year I was demonized. Like pick, banging on the, having a nervous breakdown, banging on my uh, table. Why? Because I knew I was going to hell. I knew. Every Christian before he's saved doesn't believe he, he's, he or she's going to hell. They know they're going to hell. And I did. And I guess I guess you could say I did say a prayer, but uh, he didn't answer until that, until this year, February 8th, 2015. I did say save me, but not... I said it very sarcastically, you know, Lord deliver me from that. But yeah, it's it's transformation, salvation. The act, which is not done by you, done by him. It's supposed to break you down. Remember Neo getting shot in the alleyway? Boom, 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 boom. He died to himself. And then he arose. Okay? It's like you spiritually it's a, it is a spiritual death. Because how can you to be born again, the old must die, and the new has come. So it is. Think of your salvation as your old self, a spiritual death, and then new you will arise. But it's not just a one-time process. People think it's a one-time process. It's a daily process. You got to die to yourself every day. You see you see now what I'm talking about? God does everything. What am I doing? That will you, That's what requires of you, laboring yourself. You're the laborer. 
He's a harvester. That's what you have to do. This is what a, this video is about. What you do, and only you. You labor, die to yourself, meditate in the world, world, the word of God. What? Fervent, effectual prayer, and I'm about to go into detail what prayer is. First, I'll talk about uh, prayer in, in the in our in the men of our history, true history. Of course, they won't mention this in history books because it's not important. It's not important. We want to want to keep this a secular world, isn't that what it says in the dollar bill? Secular. So yes, prayer is very, very important. Well. Now I told you, Matrix should be one of the main movies you should be talking about. There's no prayer in Matrix. Hmm. What is prayer? Let's dissect that scientifically. It's praying to a being that's outside this world for instruction, for strength, for knowledge. What about where Trinity is calling the operator? You know what I meant? For knowledge and how to fly that air helicopter in the first matrix. Does God do that to you with no knowledge? Like you immediately know? No. But the principle, don't tell me the principle is not the same. She calls someone that's outside of the matrix, a real person. I'm not saying God is a real person, he's God. But think of the operator as God in the matrix. She calls him up. The phone. The phone is this. It's Wi Fi. Some people call it an email, which is Accurate, but she called. My point is, she called someone that's outside of her realm for assistance. I need help, and he gives it instantly. Now, does God do that? To some people, maybe yes, if they're strong Christian, or but not if they're in sin. I'm gonna talk about what is effectual fervent prayer and what is required for your prayers to be answered. And when when he was running at the end of the first matrix, take some take some faith to. To listen to the operator where to go because he's getting hunted by agents. Remember, he has taken up on faith that the operator will guide him. That's all throughout the matrix. One, two, three. Phones. Think of the phone as this. They were constantly on the phone talking to someone that's outside of the matrix. They got to see by faith. He's telling me to go left. Remember, I'm a guy in the matrix in the movie. Uh, they, they're, uh, uh, they, they're on the phone. He's telling me to go left. There's nothing but agents in that way. I have to trust him. He can see it better than I can. I can't even see. I'm blind. You're blind without God. A saved person knows that. You are blind without him. Weak prayer life, you're blind. You don't know if you're going left or right. Okay? He's the operator of this world. So, yes. Prayer, every, like I said, Matrix is more spiritual than you think. Yeah, it's demonic. Don't tell me I can't be edified out of it. So prayer, I mean, in history, George Washington had a strong prayer life. You don't, you're not talking about that, taught about that in schools. Oliver Cromwell, Andrew Jackson, strong prayer life, all of them. Patton, General Patton used to say for a soldier, pray, pray for our, see, a general's no prayers with weapons. Pray, pray, uh, he used to, General Pan used to ask a Bible believer, can you pray for, for good weather or whatever, for knowledge? And he does that. Mary Queen of Scots, this is her quotation, not mine, of John Knox of Scotland. I fear John Knox's prayers more than a 10,000 army. She said he fears her, John Knox's prayers more than an army. Oh, you better believe it. You better believe it. So... If you are start going into prayer fervent and effectual, because that's what the Bible says, and to pray without ceasing, do you pray every day? I pray, some people pray three times a day. I believe, I'm not saying no, you should pray at least two. I pray it before I sleep and in the morning, day, night. And I try to be, I first of all, you should be, here's one of your first prayers, prayer for a strong prayer life. Oh Lord, I pray for a fervent, effectual prayer life in Jesus' name, Amen. That should be everyone's prayer. Was that is that your prayer? I'm talking about saved person. That should be fervent and effectual, and I'll go into that what that means. I'll go into more deeper into that. So yes, prayer, prayers, prayers, your weapon.
I'm talking about to talk about prayer. Pray without ceasing. Pray forever and effectually. Pray so that the Lord might pleasure might give you the pleasures of thine heart. So what what do you do? You keep saying God is in control, which He is. What do I do? Look, I already told you one thing. You die to yourself. That's yeah, it's of the Lord. He gives you the strength, but you end up doing it. Like I said, He gives you the tools to fix the car. You're fixing the car, though. He gives you the tools, but you still fix the car. So you labor under that. Second prayer. He's not gonna possess you and pray to Him. The Holy Ghost. You know the Holy Ghost. What it is? It's the intercessory to prayer. Holy Ghost is what tells you what to tell the Father. I pray for that. Oh Father, may the Holy Ghost be strong in me to tell me what to ask for. In Jesus' name, Amen. What you should be asking for? Well, if if you're strong in your Christian walk, you don't need to ask for temporal things. Remember, I told you temporal is the things that you see. Oh Lord, I want a job. I want money. This, that, and third. Yeah, that's important. But I already told you, there's no such thing in physical. Something that happens physical outwardly manifest out, outwardly happens first spiritual. So, you, majority of time you should be asking for spiritual things, long suffering, peace, kindness, meekness. Abide by, teach me how to be strong. Abide in your word, Lord. Lord. Those should be your type of prayers, because He knows what you want before you ask for them. Those those temporal things, physical things, which is not just thing as physical, money, the job, whatever wife is are, are gonna come later and he'll and here's the funny thing sometimes God's answers yes I, I, if it, it God will answer prayers the, under these three conditions if it's according with it with his will that's effectual did you pray for it fervently do you just pray 30 seconds in Jesus name and went to sleep like I used to do you pray like the heathen do our father water head robotic like Catholics like I used to do, because I was a Catholic. Fervent, effectual. You're in sin, then you won't answer prayers. But here's what, like I said, if it's in his will. It could be in his will, but people forget. His answers could be yes, no to a prayer, but can be wait. Remember, wait on the Lord. People forget, oh, he didn't answer my prayer. No. Maybe it isn't with his will, and you're, you're living a strong prayer life. You're doing things righteously. Maybe the answer is wait. Ken Hovind brought that to light to me. You ever thought your answer might be wait? Hold on. Yes, this is God talking to you in your prayer. Yes, I know the answer to your prayer. You're doing everything correct, but it's not the time yet. God's about timing. He's never too early. He's never too late. Book of Psalms. His way is perfect. Wait. So I talk about the things that require to for answer prayer most of the time. If it's in accordance with His will, you live in a pure life, not not in sin. You're confessing every sin. Remember, saved people don't repent of sin, of future sin, of, of sin they're doing now after salvation. They confess it, forsake it, and they don't do it again. Confessing it and then do it again, He's not gonna answer prayer. Uh, yeah, prayer, just look throughout history, true history. I'm not going to bring out any more examples. There, It's a weapon. The Word of God is a weapon. See it as the sword of the Spirit. That's what it is. A prayer is a weapon. A prayer, I, I guess, is this. If the, the Bible is a sword of the Spirit, remember, you're a soldier. Then a prayer is like an airstrike. See those army movies? Call in the airstrike. It's something beyond them. It's something big. It's not just their guns. It's their... It's whatever, bombers. We're getting overwhelmed by the enemy. You're calling an airstrike, okay? Think of your prayers as an airstrike. Man, you're supposed to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, it's getting bad. I'm getting suicidal thoughts. Not comfortable with his life, Lord. I'm calling an airstrike. Mm, bomb. I'm, I'm getting oppressed, Lord. I'm getting... The, they're surrounding me. Airstrike. Don't worry, me call the airstrike. Remember, you're a soldier, remember? <laughs> so, yeah, you can think of prayer whatever you want. I think of it, remember, military mind. That's what the Jesuit order is, a military order. Yeah, you're a soldier, do you know that? You need to think of yourselves as a soldier. A soldier. I got this from Brian again. Like I said, I don't... He's sure stealing a lot. Well, technically, I know it's not really his. God put it on his heart to say this. So, technically, I'm not stealing from him. But, yeah, I still have to give him the credit. He says... 
I agree. I'm just saying. I'm not stealing. I'm just agreeing with him. A Christian life is like a soldier. Well, let's let's describe a soldier. He obeys his general's orders without question. He never gives up, even though he's surrounded. And he doesn't care if he dies, if it's in the service of his country or, or his brethren. And which is what Lincoln said: "It doesn't matter if I die, as long as it's at the post of honor and duty." Sounds like he's a soldier. Uh. Here's to you Christians that say, go out in the world right now, blah, blah, blah. A soldier needs boot camp, which I'm in right now. He needs training. What soldier goes out into the field of battle? I don't know, boot camp. And there's different levels of boot camp for different soldiers. Some soldiers, they don't get it right away. They need to be in boot camp for like, I don't know, two, three months. I don't know how, how long basic training is. It depends on what type of soldier you are. If God grew me, used to be a lieutenant, a general, or you woke up in rank, soldier, but every soldier has different limits of basic training, different extended period of time. And a soldier trusts his fellow soldiers with their life. Don't tell me a soldier doesn't. They're brethren. Oh, my brethren said, I should do this. Yeah, does it sound like the Lord told him to do that? Yes. Yeah. He didn't say that. That's that's something I'm saying. I don't, I don't think he said that. Yeah, the soldier said trust in general's orders, but you need to trust your fellow soldiers with their life. Watch for saving private wine. Save it, Private Ryan. When they're at the beach of Normandy, you don't think there's trust there? People were praying, by the way. They were praying it was rosy breeds, mostly Catholics, but mostly were Christian men sacrificed on purpose for the Jesuit order. Like I said, those bombs and purposely missed those machine gun turrets at the top. That was an execution. That was in war. As soon as they got out of those boats, they were getting perfor perforated. That's a sacrifice. Of course, devil loves sacrifice. Blood sacrifice is what uh, wars are. <laughs> Kill these white men. Damn, this is what that devil says. Damn these white men. These damnable white men. Taking the Bible to the ends of the earth. Because the devil hates the white man. Like, like almost hates the Jews. He hates the Jews more, but he hates this white man. Of course, that's why, that's why the Jesuit order is white. Because they're the most obedient. All the Jesuit order, the top ranking officials are all white. You ever saw a real black pope like me? No. Anyways, prayer life. Fervent. How long do you do it? Do you do did you put your heart in it? Oh God. Talk to me like a roll up. Amen. Do you say in Jesus' name? Do you pray in Jesus in Jesus' name? Like Joel Olsen tells you to do? Jesus Christ. Uh I want a car today in Jesus' name, amen. No, you pray to the Father. He prayed to the Father. Why don't you pray to the Father? Most people don't even know how to pray. Pray to God the Father in Jesus' name. And in the middle, put whatever you want. Jesus prayed to his Father. Don't tell me he didn't repeat the same things. I thought you said vain repetition. No, ask for the same thing. Just make sure it's not a robot and you're saying it with fervor. He prayed for his Father. Oh, Father. If it's possible, let this cup pass for me. There's a pastor saying he repeated the same words. Use discernment. Did he use Hail Mary's? Father, Hail Mary, full of grace. Or oh, our father three times, like his father's a robot. Our father, well, our heaven. No, I used to do that. I used to just, that used to be my prayer. I used to pray the gospel. Yeah, I believe you died in Christ. That was, used to be my prayer. Deliver us from the people that write their praise down. Oh, my goodness. He, he's a person, remember, because he created you. Talk to him like I'm talking to you now. I'm not getting into length. How, how long does a prayer have to get? Some people pray two hours. Praise God. Don't tell me I need to pray two hours. Some people say hour. Yeah, I can believe with that. Is mine's an hour? No. Well, here's the funny thing is, I'm so deep in my prayer, that's how you should be you should be beyond time. <laughs> then my spirit is not affected by time. So I don't know how long my prayers are. He knows. Don't tell me he won't give me a reward for prayer life. Good work, son. Your prayer, do you know your prayer was an hour? No, I didn't, Lord, because I know time is illusion. But I, I, if I have to guess, I'll say my prayers are 30 minutes. Do I want it to be an hour and two hours? Absolutely, yes. But I can write my prayers down, say every prayer in the Bible, and make it two to three hours. You think he's going to listen to me? And it could be effectual. That means in, within the will of God, but it's not fervent. You're praying to him like a robot. Our Father, water, heaven. Just reciting words, reading. No. And another thing with prayer, do you pray for other people? Here's what you do. People say, well, "What do I do?" God does everything. What do I do? You die to yourself. Work out your fear. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Dying to yourself. That's you. You work it out. 
He'll help you. But you're doing it. Dying to yourself daily in prayer life. What? You think God possesses you? You're possessed. The you automatic know tells you what to pray for? No. Holy Ghost is like this. Okay. Okay. He's whispering. Holy Ghost whispers in your ear. Yeah. Pray about this. Pray about that. Holy Ghost is an intercessor for the Father. No, no, no. Don't ask for that. It's temporal. Ask for spiritual. Ask for strength. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what to pray for. Well, again, that's. There's no certain things I want to pray for, but I already told you one of them. Stop praying for temporal because he already knows what you need. God's not stupid. God is a people. We I'm not saying we think God's stupid, but we act like it. Of course, he he, God, he need he knows what you need. Clothes on your back. You don't have to ask close. Ask for the spiritual stuff, and he'll give you the temporal stuff. You don't have to ask for God. I need a house, mortgage. I'm getting behind his mortgage, Lord. I need some money. I need some money. It's the money. Ask for the spiritual stuff, and the physical stuff will come. He knows what you want before you ask for it. Did you answer, ever answer a prayer that you think about answering, asking for him, but he answered it before you even prayed? What to pray for? Well, it's something that, if you're saved, this is something you better be praying for. The brethren, the brothers in Christ, the brothers and sisters of Christ. I, I pray by name. Every day, if not, I say the brethren. Oh Lord, protect the brethren. Keep them on the path to light. Keep them on that path. Keep them out of darkness. Give them the gift of fervent, effectual ministry. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Should your prayer be like that? No, you better be praying for the brethren. Absolutely. I don't care how you pray for the brethren. You better be praying for the brethren. They're your soldiers in this war. Not your mother, your biological mother, your biological father, if they're not saved. You, or everybody that's saved, we're in a war. We're God's army. Period. You got to pray for your, your man sitting next to you, shooting. Your soldier. You, yeah, that's number one. The spiritual things. Lord, gives me strength. Lord, I don't really... I'm like this. Lord, I don't really believe... Help me with thine unbelief, which was a prayer by David, by the way. <laughs> Lord, I don't believe. Help me with thine unbelief. Yeah, I pray that prayer. Psalms, perfect way to, to know what to pray for. One of the, my favorite books. Old Testament is for, it's not, it's not really for, for me there. This is a church age. Don't tell me you can't be edified. It's there for a reason. Psalms. Take an example from David. How to pray. Oh Lord, I don't believe. But help, I believe, Lord, but help me without unbelief. In Jesus' name, amen. Pr exactly. Pray without ceasing. Do you give up? Nah, he's not listening. I pray no more. Pray without ceasing. You know, the devil fears nothing but prayer. The devil is scared to death for prayer. He wants to sever that communication with you between the Lord. Oh, good, I got him. He's not prayer. He's done. Doesn't matter if you're saved or not saved, he's done. He's gonna be fruitless and he's gonna be thrown through a fire. Fire mean as his works. God, so God can't use him no more. So yeah, pray for the brotherhood, spiritual gifts, strength. The unsaved, absolutely. First is primarily for the brethren, but for everyone else. Here's something to pray for. Blessed hope, my Lord. I don't really, do I really believe Jesus Christ can come at any moment? Do I really believe it? So a Christian needs to be honest with himself. Do I really believe Christ can come for me right now? Beam me up right now. I don't believe the Lord. Give me strength to believe he can come at any moment. Very important prayer. Do I, do I really believe, Lord? I know you can do it, but you will do it for me. Big difference. Can do it. Of course, you can do anything. Uh, but can you do it for me? Will you do it for me? I don't believe. Give me strength to believe. I'm just telling you things you should pray for. That you should pray for. Um, yeah, love for the brotherhood. Spiritual things. Strength. It's something everybody's supposed to be praying for. Uh, America's judgment. You think the national judgment is part of the 70 week of Daniel? It could happen tomorrow. I, matter of fact, I know America's judgment is going to happen for the 70th week of Daniel. I know. God, I pray for that your hand of 
your hand of protection is still here and it's gone. It's gone after the body of Christ is out of here. In Jesus' name, amen. What, what do I do? See, oh, you don't need to do nothing. God's in control. Fatalism, which is a sin. Just stay here. Read the Bible. God's in control. He does everything. What do I do? You pray, because God doesn't pray for you. That's one. You die to yourself every day, renewing of your mind. And you yield to the Holy Ghost. Three. Father, oh, the Son, Holy Ghost. That's what you do. Because I was in the same position. What do I actually do? God does everything. He's in control. He controls everything. What I do is in His power. I don't have my own righteousness. I gave it from Jesus Christ. I got it from Jesus Christ. Remember, God has three roles in your life. God the Father is your fate. He He's a general. He tells you your gut, your plan in life, your fate, your destiny. No, your fate's not in your hands. It's in His hands. That's His job. Number one. Two, Jesus gives you the righteousness so you don't have to be self-righteous. Jesus Christ is there to keep you humble because you're a servant. That's his job. I'm talking about roles of the three parts of the Godhead. Father, fate and destiny in your life. His plan for you. Two, imputed righteousness so you don't have to get self-righteous. And when you do, Jesus Christ is there to humble you down. Remember, he's God, but yet he came as a servant. Do you get? Can you understand that? He's God. Why is he serving people? Why is he serving man? Oh, he's a heretic. God, yes, that's what he was doing. He came as a servant, washing the disciples' feet. Do you know what's the meaning behind that, by the way? When Jesus Christ washed the disciples' feet, which we did in Catholic school, by the way. Why did he do this, stupid? Why did Jesus wash the disciples' feet? Remember, you're supposed to go out in the world. The dirt are the people that reject you. No problem. You don't take offense. Yeah, they spit on me. They slap me. They try to kill me. Wash the feet. Keep walking. You're not supposed to force the gospel on anyone. Wash the sandals off your feet. Keep moving. That's what that was symbolizing. Remember, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. I think he did that first. John the Baptist. Lord, why Why are you telling me, a man, to baptize you? You're, you're, the, you're God. should be the other way around. No, John, baptize me, John. Servant. Son sinking and the Holy Ghost gives you the power to do it. Holy Ghost is God in motion. Like I said, he gives you the tools to fix that car. He's not fixing that car. You fix that car. That car, what is that car? That car could be anything. Your ministry, your family. God's going to give you the tools. But are you going to brag and say, I fixed this car? No. Yes, I fixed the car, but I couldn't do it without these tools. What tools? The fruits of the Spirit. Long-suffering, meekness, temperance. You can't do nothing without God. You know, I pray for God when I'm on the toilet. This is, <laughs> sorry, I'm going there to defecate. I can't imagine gave him birth. Lord, thank you for making me. Here's another prayer. Lord, thank you for making me a man. In Jesus' name, amen. Constipation. You pray, you pray to the Lord that, that, that's how far you're into your prayer? Yes. Lord, it's stuck. Help me out here. I'm not lying. I can't lie. You know, you know how some people are constipated. It, it, it if they, they, when they defecate, they try so hard going like this on the toilet that they bleed. They bust the capillary. Do you have any idea? You know, some people can't defecate. They need the colostomy bags. Are you thankful? What do you uh, thankfulness? See, I pray, Diane. That should be the first thing I should be saying. Pray. How many times do you thank the Lord? Are you just asking for stuff? But how many times do you thankful? Sometimes I'm, like I said, I'm depraved. Sometimes I go out and pray without thankful. That could be interpreted as a sin. Yes. You can say it out of ignorance, out of wolf, I don't care. If you don't, everyone should pray for thank, thank gratefulness. Everyone. Say it person. At least once. Thank you for my life, sir. Uh, sir, Lord. My, I call my master. Here's my prayer, which I get from Eric Phelps. I make believe like um, remember Star Wars, Master, what is thy bidding, Darth Vader? Oh, uh, is he saying he's Darth Vader? No, I'm talking about. He should be like that, though. Master, what is thy bidding? 
Don't tell me it doesn't have Christian values, Star Wars. It's not a Christian movie. It's a demonic movie. Darth Vader is unwavering, obedient to his master. He does what his master says without question. Okay? Without question, he does. So, yeah. Th how, what are you thanking him for? Christian should be... Don't think prayer is just you kneeling before bed for 30 minutes. I just prayed a couple times right now. I do that because I, I don't want to forget. Of course, he won't make you forget. But when something comes to my head, yeah, Lord, pray, yeah, please give me this, Lord. Uh, oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful day, Father. Look at that, shining birds. How many people pray for that? Thank you for, for this wonderful day, Father. In Jesus' day, in Jesus' name, amen. Prayer. devil doesn't care if you're saved. If your prayer life is weak, he's like, okay, I know he's saved. Let God, let's God's light shine on this video so you can see me. The devil's like, okay, I know you're saved, but your prayer life is weak. It's pathetic. You're praying vain repetition. You're in sin. That's what the devil talks about people that's not affected prayer life. You're in sin. You're saved. You're in sin, though. And uh, I got you thinking that uh, he's not answering your prayers when it's really weight. <laughs> Prayer, prayer, pray. Prayer is very important. What is your two most important weapons? Well, the first is the Word of God because it teaches you how to pray. Your sword and spirit. Second is prayer. Look in history in battle. I mean, George Washington used to pray. George Washington prayed for help from the American Revolution. Do you know the revolution, how we defeat the greatest army on earth, the British Army? Let's talk about... Put it into historical context. I'm an unbeliever. I don't believe in prayer. I'm an unsaved person. How does it fit into true history? I'm telling you. Do you have any idea if we didn't have the help from the France in the American Revolution War, we'd be done? Do you have any idea the British Army was the most powerful army? Controlled by the Jesuits, King George, by the way, by the Pope. Greatest army on the earth. And there's people saying, and you're in sin, Yes, of the devil re revolutionary war. We didn't really win. No, that was of God. I used to think that. Every other war after that is of the devil. Civil war, of the devil, of the devil. This was of God. Why? People was in sin. They prayed for it. Remember, this was before the Declaration of Independence. There was no Declaration of Independence. Prayer was going everywhere. John Gano, George Washington's preacher. They were, they were in sin. God moved, put it on the heart of the France. To give our money, to give us money, to give us troops. That's why we defeated the British. Jesuits can't have that. So they punished France with the French Revolution. With the guillotines, which are coming back. One of the states said, we need to bring back the guillotine for capital punishment. Guillotine was invented by a guy named Guillotine. Guess how he died? By the guillotine. The inventor of the guillotine died by the guillotine. He was French. So yeah, uh, God's not going to, this is what I, I've been saying. I'm telling you what I've been saying. Do I really believe God listens, answers my prayers? Of course he answers prayers in general, but does he answer my prayers? I don't think he's really going to do this. Oh Lord, everyone should pray this prayer, David's prayer. I don't believe at this moment. Help me with thy unbelief. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. I just said a prayer. Is that a prayer? Yes. Real quick. But should that be a prayer before you go to bed and we wake up? No. You should be praying throughout the whole day. 24-7, really. You can pray your dreams. I don't know if you can. But yeah, what's the time limit? At least 30, 30 minutes. If it's fervently, effectually. I want it to be longer. There's a prayer right here. Oh, Lord, make, make give me a suitable length for my prayer from now on. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if it's, You don't really... If a person knows how long he prayed for, here's what you got to be careful for. This goes for believers. Oh, I prayed for two hours. I prayed for an hour. I prayed for 30 minutes. How do you know how long you prayed for? Are you watching the clock? When you when you pray, you're supposed to be in a different state of mind. Remember, there's no such thing as time. I be Lord's probably be saying, you know, you're, when I'm up in heaven, you know, you're praying for an hour every day. I didn't know that, Lord. It seems quick. If pr Those are prayer is work. 
Do some people pray they sweat? It's work. What do I do? That's what you do. He tell Holy Ghost tells you, gives you the strength to pray and what to ask for. But you're praying. It's in. It ends with you. It begins with him, but it ends with you. That's why you get reward. If you say you don't do nothing, but then why the bother? Why does God give you a reward? I don't do nothing. It's all of God, which it is. But why does He give me a reward? I earn it. I don't earn salvation. But I don't tell me I don't earn rewards. You're the laborer. Be a laborer of Christ. That's what you do. Work out. Don't earn. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What does he mean by working it out? Strong prayer life. That's how you work out. Faith is like a muscle. All you bodybuilders out there. It's like a, you better believe it's like a muscle. You don't use it, you lose it. No pain, no gain. So yeah, prayer is important. What are you praying right now, Emmanuel? Simple. I'm praying for my family. They are saved and are saved. I'm praying for the brethren right now. I'm praying for uh, America not to be judged right now, not until the body of Christ leaves. Because America's judgment can happen. America's judgment is just as imminent as Jesus Christ's return. It can happen tomorrow. I don't believe you. Okay. Let Iran attack Israel and see what happens to us. That's only... Why hasn't he judged us? Maybe because Israel's okay. They're still getting attacked, but they haven't been bombed back to the Stone Age yet. Iran's already saying death to Israel, death to America. He who touches the Israelites, the Jewish people, has touched the pupil of my eye. God the Father said that. His chosen people. Yes, is he saying God's a racist? I thought he was in a respecter. I thought he was in a respecter of persons. Uh, well, here in this case, using it in proper context, yes, he's a respecter. Of course, he loves everyone, but he has affection for his Jews. Jesus Christ was a Jew. When you see him, when you see him in heaven, he doesn't look like a white man. He's in his body, Jewish body. The same one that got crucified down here? Absolutely. With the marks. That's not going nowhere. He's not regenerated. Yeah, he's in a glorified body, but I believe he has the marks. You got to remind you. Oh, there's the marks on his hand. That's why I'm here. The holes in his hand. Some say, some say he got crucified here, probably. But you'll see the marks, wherever they are. They say that because if, if he got crucified here through the hand, his weight will pull him down and rip right through his hand. So they said there's a part of the bones that anchors you. Could be the marks on his feet, the crown. Is he wearing the crown? Probably not. But do you see that it was a crown of thorns on his head? The marks? Yes. Got to. Yeah. That's the point. Why not? That's the perfect. That's his bad. There's a book I read back in high school called The Red Badge of Courage. What is a red badge of courage? The scars. My war wounds. Wow, oh, man, you've been to a tough battle. Yes, man. Look at all this war wounds here. Got shot here by semi-automatic. Everyone has spiritual scars. Those are badges. That's Jesus Christ badge. Badge of courage. Trusting in my father. Sphere. The sphere mark. So yeah, prayer life. Very important. Although you may be seeing this as one of my earliest videos, I, I really it really took 25 videos for me to make this. That's true for I'm depraved. Prayer is one of the most important things a Christian does in his walk. Prayer. Dr Satan dreads nothing more than prayer. He's scared to death. Scared to death when we read that Bible. No question. Here's what, what scares the devil? Reading the Bible. That's why he created a society. Do everything in his powers and make you not read the Bible. That's why he brings all these heretical Bibles, NIV. Okay, read the Bible, but read some other things. Don't read the Bible. Read, watch TV. That's why he gives you all these distractions. <laughs> Doesn't want you to read this Bible. Because it hurts me. It's the sword of the Spirit. Second, doesn't want you to pray. Okay, he's reading the Bible. At least he's not praying. And if he is, then keep him in sin so it's, it has no effect against God. Am I up to the point where... There's people, praise God. I want to get, here's a prayer right here. Father, I want to get to the point of, of these people I'm saying, God answers every one of their prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what you should be like. There's a, there's a person, uh, is he telling the truth? I don't know, but he says, just from hearsay, God answers every one of my prayers. 
Praise God. Praise God. Can, can, can you say that of you? No, I can't. I know every time when I ask, this is what he says, every time when I kneel down and pray, I pray like it's already been answered. Praise God. That's how you should be praying. You pray like it's already done before it happened. Isn't that what faith is? It's the certainty in the unseen, which the Bible says. You prayed for a car. Are you praying like you already got the car? This is what I sometimes do in prayer. I pray for something. The next day I pray like I already got it. Thank you for this, Father. But I didn't get it yet. <laughs> Doesn't matter even if I get it or not. If it's according with his will, God will give you the pleasures of thine heart. What If it's according in his will. If you're not praying for sinful things. I pray to be a millionaire. No. I pray to have money to serve you. Yes. Pray for lots of girlfriends. No. I pray for a wife. Yes. Ask, make sure you ask him for biblical things. I pray for my country, my nation, not to get destroyed by the Jesuit order. Yes. I'm not praying for this country. Go ahead. Up in smoke. No. Pray for myself and myself only. Okay. But you pray for the brethren? No. You pray for the unsaved people. Is it sinking in? Prayer is very important. I'm, I'm doing this, by the way, check the battery power. Make sure the devil didn't shut this down, but I'm good on battery power. Prayer is very important. Like I said, do you see that in the Matrix? Absolutely. And he was walking, running. Don't tell me you it. does not have to have faith that the oper operator, whatever, tank, is guiding him to the Matrix. Because he can't see. You sure you want me to go left? No, your other left. There's, there's agents everywhere there. He has to trust him, undeniably. Trinity calls the guy. Yeah, I want to know how to fly this plane. You know, the Jesuits probably can do that already. I told you, carbon, what you're made out of, which is made of the sun. I told you, you're the universe. Oh, that's heresy. No, it isn't. That's scientific fact. You're made of the same stuff as the universe. God's the universe. No. God created it. He spoke it into its existence. Universe means spoken sentence. But the universe is not God. Universe is God-like. You're a God-like being. Well, of course. Same stuff the earth is made out of. You're made out of. Earth is made out of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. What, what do you know? Your body's made out of that. What do you know? The sun's made out of that. S-U-N. What do you know? The universe is saying it's mostly empty space. What do you know? Your body's made out of empty space. 99.999 empty space. Orion's nebula, the cluster star formation. Well, that looks like your brain. Of course it does. Uh, Iron Man 3 people. Used to, used to, I like Iron Man. Iron Man 3, a lot of edifying things. When he's, when Iron Man 3, when he's talking to uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Guy Pierce, he has a connection of a, whatever. Of a camera inside his head. You sh this is for people that see Iron Man three. Oh, I'm a Christian. I don't watch no movies. Okay, you're not edifying off of this. Those those, those Christians who saw Iron Man three, which Eric Eric Phelps watched Iron Man three, and he saved. He's sixty year old man. Okay, so he, he goes to the movies. Yes. So I used to be like that. Oh, should I watch movies? What about books? Are books okay? There's some demonic books out there. The Shack, which Ken Hoven loves. Give me away from that book. That's a book, though. That's edifying. No, some books are more demonic than these movies. Hmm. Anyways, Iron Man 3. For those who saw Iron Man 3, he has a little connecting thing that shows him the inside of his brain. He, he has a controller. He, he, he turns it on. He says, he says to uh, Pepper, look at that. And it's first the universe. No, it's, it's the universe. It's the picture of the universe. Oh, uh, sorry. That's the universe. He changed the picture. That's my brain. What? No, that's the you're looking at a live feed of my brain. And I said to myself, hey, wait, they look alike. Well, of course they don't look alike. You're the universe. <laughs> look at Iron Man 3. You're the universe. You're not God. You're God-like. You're a divine being. You know your patterns of your neurons in your brain matches to that of the universe. Which, which makes it completely stupid how, you know, I was never atheist. Never. That, I'm not to make fun of atheists, but I was never truly an atheist. I was agnostic, which means I believe in God, but I don't believe he works in my life or nothing. But I never, never 
Never. That I'll attest to. Said I was an atheist. I used to pray before. You know, I used to pray before going to Catholic school. I, I, I've been praying since grade four. Never was saved, though. I remember grade four praying. I knew better. Of course God exists. And I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know. I don't have the facts to back it up. But of course I knew God exists. In the heart, the fool says no God. Before we deceive ourselves. So yes, yeah, just wrap it up. Prayer is very important. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop. He's not answering my prayer. Pray to, pray to find out why he's not answering my prayer. That's a good prayer, prayer right there. Oh Father, I pray. Confess to me why you're not answering my prayer in Jesus name amen how do you know what to pray for the Holy Ghost tells me he's an intercessor that's how I know what to pray for if I yield in him and I'm perfect and at least I strive to be perfect should you be perfect no but should you strive to be perfect in your life absolutely that's how the Jesuits call themselves the society of the perfect absolutely they think they are they're gonna go to hell which is earth by the way Little Earth, Middle Earth, and that Earth is going to be thrown in the lake of fire, which is the sun. S U N. That's where the Jesuits are going. Of course, they know they're going there. That's why the symbol is the sun. Remember, I told you earlier in the video. Okay, yeah, sun worship. I'm not a sun worshiper. You're not a sun worshiper. You don't worship the sun. S U N. You don't worship that, right? S U N. I'm talking to everybody. What are you talking about? We're all sun worshipers. Why are we sun worshipers? Well, you're worshiping the lake of fire, which is the S U N, which you're going to be thrown into. Okay, you're not a sun worshiper. December 25th. You're not worshiping the S-O-N. You're worshiping the S-U-N. That's a sun worship holiday. The rising of the sun. No, the real sun. S-U-N. It's astrology. December 25th. Sun worshiper. You told me you're not a sun worshiper. My bank is sun trust. Of course. You got to trust in the sun. S-U-N. <laughs> trust in that sun. Trust in creation, not the creator. You're the sun, S O N, Christ consciousness. Well, sun worshippers. Of course, Illuminati is sun worshippers. And the Jesuits are sun worshippers. Of course. You see the sun every day. And if you're unsaved, that's where you're going into, I believe. I believe there's a physical lake of fire, and that's where it is. It's in the sun. Just like there's a physical hell beneath the earth, in the middle earth. Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, that's where hell is, in the center of the earth. Journey to the center of the earth. <laughs> so that's, yeah, the Lake of Fire is the sun, which I saw a video of NASA in, in 4 HD, real detail, beautiful quality. Why? Because God wants to make you say, hey, you're wondering where the Lake of Fire is. Well, it's the sun. It's a lake, molten lava. That's where unbelievers, their final resting place is, the Lake of Fire. And death and hell, death, that's you, sin, the wages of sin is death. Hell, well, it has to be the earth, our cast. God's going to throw the whole, yeah, he's going to throw the whole earth like it's a little, beep, like it's a little grain to, to the earth, to God. The earth is nothing but a little grain of sand, beep, to this little grain of sand we call earth to the sun. Sun is, you know, having a, you have any idea how big the sun is compared to our planet? Compare a grain of sand to a tennis ball. It's green of sand, it's earth, tennis ball, it's the sun. You know there are suns bigger than the sun? That's why I laugh that people say that I'm God. Uh, Ken Hoban has this in his creation seminary. Look to how, you, how you're just a little speck in the grand schemes of the universe. Then say if you're God. I'm not saying I'm God. doesn't matter. The devil wants you to believe you're God, you know, if you don't believe that. That's why you're a human. You're a God-man. <laughs> I'm a human being. Of course you are. No, I'm not a human. I'm man. And a woman is not a... And a woman is... Again, for all you women, you need to submit to your man. Why? Well, let's break down your word. Woman. Womb man. At first, God created Adam and then Eve. Woman did not come out of... Woman did not come out of God. You know... Do you know God created you, woman, but he didn't. you did not come out of God? What does that mean? That God had to use something of Adam, his rib, to create you, which is why you need to submit to your man. You came out of where? Where is the lower rib located? Oh, towards towards Adam's womb. If he was a woman, of course, that's why you're called a womb, a womb man, a woman. W O M B. Drop that B down. Woman. 
You came out of Adam's womb. The rib is right here. Do you know, I, I don't even know if the value of this shoe, you know this one bone that regenerates, that grows in the human body? And that's the lower rib. That's what Ken Hovind said, not me. What a coincidence. I'm saying this sarcastically. There's no such thing as coincidence. That's what he said. There's a rib in the man's body that grows every time. It gets broken, that's the only bone. It grows back. I'm not, I'm not saying healing back. Every bone can heal. I'm talking about you literally break it off and throw away the piece. That piece of the rib grows back. That's what he said. As God took Adam's rib out of his womb and made the womb man. First, first man, then woman. But no, we chain of command. We got woman ruling everything. Madam Secretary. Now you got Quantico. Who's the star? Well, woman. I'm not saying nothing wrong with these shows. I like these shows. I watch these shows, Quantico. But I'm watching it critically. No, you're not watching it critically. You're watching it for entertainment. No, I'm watching it critically because I know it's women everywhere. Marvel's Agent of Shields. I'm doing it to make my point. Women everywhere. They they're in the role. They're fighting like men. Well, that's coincidence. Of course it is. Women everywhere. Trinity in the Matrix. She's like a man. She's fighting. Woman, woman, woman. Woman preachers. Joyce Myers. Woman's not to teach men nothing. A woman's not to usurp authority. Uh, my wife tells me this is the best thing to do. What? No, my wife wouldn't like that. What? Even believers are saying that. That's a sin. You know what feminist sees a sin? Even Forget, I'm not a homosexual. You're acting like one. Feminine. Uh, this is... Damon Wayans in Living Color. A feminist, that's a sin. Jamie Foxx dresses like that woman. Do you know it's a sin just to dress like a woman? Do you know that? And a woman to look like a man. We got men looking like women and men women look like men. Hair bobbed off, that's a sin. Men long hair, that's a sin. Men with purses, that's a sin. Women with pants, that's a sin. Men with skirts, that's a sin. Women with jeans, that's a sin. Author of confusion. When I look at a woman, do you know I stare at her like this? It doesn't matter if I look at her in a woman, in a physical, or TV. But you know what I'm saying, saying in my head? No, I'm not saying I'm lusting at her. I look at her hair. Wow. Look how beautiful her hair is. It's long. Well, of course, to me, that's what distincts a woman. To me, that's the essence of a woman. Long hair. Of course, the breasts, but long hair. I don't. Here's the difference between my depravity. I used to be staring at that. Now I stare at the hair. Look at that long hair, Lord. God, Lord. Look how beautiful you made your, the woman. Long, beautiful hair. But I'm not saying that of a woman. I'm saying that of a man. Yeah, he has long, beautiful hair, but it's a problem. It's a man. <laughs> Fabio, long, beautiful hair. His hair beautiful, Fabio. It's on the wrong man, though. It's supposed to be on a woman. Not on a man. And women with short hair. Anne Hathaway. Beautiful woman, Anne Hathaway. She's beautiful. You ever saw her short hair? Scarlett Johansson. You know they say the Danish people? She's Danish. Are the most beautiful. They avoid the, the most beautiful uh, type of people. I'm talking about physical beauty in the world. You know that? Danish people. Scarlett Johansson. Don't tell me she's not beautiful. She's gorgeous. Except... When she cuts her hair, it looks like a little kid. I saw her with short hair. What? That's that's Scarlett Johansson, Jennifer Lawrence. I'm not lusting at these women. I'm just making a point. Look at her with long, short hair as opposed to long hair. Well, that looks not unnatural. Of course, it's unnatural. Now, come on, use some discernment. Hair down to the like Rapunzel down to the floor. No, woman's hair should be up to here. Remember Al Pacino, Devil's Advocate? Oh, you what? That's a satanic movie. I use the sermon. I'm making a point. Edification. He talked to the girl. A woman should show out her shoulders. That's the devil talking to her. You should cut her hair. Her hair was short. That's what she did. Went to Menta and she killed herself. Just the same. Just a thought. Oh, short hair. If I cut my hair short, that means that's going to... No, I'm just saying the devil is the rebellion. God says a woman has to have head covered, her hair. And Al Pacino, Night of Malta, Al Pacino said, you know, you should cut your hair. You need to show off your shoulders so the man can laugh sad. It. Look at her shoulder. You know the soldiers, sol the soldiers, I can't even say it. This of a woman is one of the most attractive things to a man. Do you know that? It's not just the breast. Well, of course. 
the woman knew better if she had her hair down to her shoulders, they'll cover it so a man won't lust at it. A woman's covered completely. This is all you see of a woman, Arabic. I wonder why. You only see this. Everything's covered. So prayer is very important. I can do a thing, all things through Christ who strengthened me. Peace.